Tu vida con estilo, al estilo Brown. Y bueno, hace ya unas semanas estuvo con nosotros John Harrington junto con la producción del documental Into Nature's Wild, una película y un documental fantástico creado por Brand USA y también en apoyo de la agencia Alquimia de mi amiga Lourdes Veró. Tuve la suerte de conducir el evento en el Museo Sumaya y además entrevistar a estos grandes personajes. Y esta es la entrevista que quiero compartir en este momento aquí en Al Estilo Brown. Es una plática con el piloto de una tribu nativa de Estados Unidos y él es John Harrington. Dentro de esta cobertura que estoy haciendo de Into Nature's Wild, estoy con John B. Harrington, que él es un astronauta y es un piloto, que además es un aventurero y le encanta salir al exterior, vivir de cerca la naturaleza, ha estado en la Tierra, ha estado también en el espacio y hoy lo tengo aquí frente a mí, lo cual es muy emocionante, es la primera vez que entrevisto a un astronauta, my first time that I talk with an astronaut, <laughs> which is not easy to find an astronaut, not, not because I think much. there are not so many astronauts in this world. How are you, John Harrington? I'm doing so well, thank you so much for being here and, and the interview, this is great, <laughs> love being here. Mi primera vez que hablo con un astronauta, no es fácil encontrar a un astronauta. Y bueno, no hay muchos de ustedes. ¿Cómo estás, John? Muy bien estar por aquí. Amo estar aquí. Your first time here in Mexico City? First time in Mexico City. Uh -huh. ¿Tu primera vez en la ciudad? Sí, es mi primera vez. What do you think? How do you feel here in Mexico? Your experience these two days or when you just arrived? Oh, just beautiful. We came out of the mountains of Mon uh, We were in Montana. Uh, before that, we were in Alaska. So I went from being on a river in the northern part of Alaska. Very few people. Uh, Nobody. Uh, you know, handful of people. Uh, get on a plane and fly to Mexico City. And it's just, it's wonderful. I mean, so many nice people I've met. Uh, beautiful in the area of Polanco. Is it Polanco? Uh, Polanco. So, that's where we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to wander around and, and meet folks. Fabulous food. It's great. Oh, right. ¿Qué piensas? ¿Cómo te sientes aquí estos días desde que llegaste? Hermoso, estábamos en las montañas de Montana. Antes estuvimos en Alaska, en un río. Es una parte norte de Alaska, gente muy linda, muy amable. Luego tomamos un avión a la Ciudad de México, que es fantástica. La gente es increíble. La zona de Polanco, maravillosa y conocí gente muy interesante. La comida deliciosa también. Tell me something. You, you become from a very important nation, which is Chickasaw. Mm -hmm. You are a Native American pilot and a man, a Native American man. So it's important for us to, to talk about a little, bit, a little bit to understand your, who you are sure. and, you know, about all this organization because you have your own government and, and, and so it's, it's like a very important community. Sure. Well, my tribe, the Chickasaw Nation, Uh, is in Oklahoma, it's where it is now. It didn't start in Oklahoma. Uh, our, our migration legend has us moving from someplace in the West uh, towards the southeastern part of what is now the United States. Mm. And our first European contact was in the 1500s, I think, was Hernando de Soto. Uh -huh. and, on, and he landed in, in what is now Florida and then made his way across the southeastern United States and encountered my tribe after having decimated you know peoples along the way and my tribe kind of sat back and let him just be there right mm -hmm. well not because they were afraid of him but they realized that if they you know stood up to him that they would they would lose uh until the following spring when he decided he was going to take people you know he wanted slaves he wanted women uh the tribe rose up and and battled him and and eliminated him eliminated his uh some of his conquistadors Mortally wounded, uh, Hernando de Soto, he, he died, I guess, in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. So thereafter, my tribe was successfully, you know, held off being, uh. really being exterminated. So my tribe has a history of being able to stand up, make the right decisions, you know, to ensure their longevity. So uh -huh. um, we originally from a group in the southeastern United States, there's a mound culture, much like you have the Mayan, uh, uh, mountain, Mayan uh, temples. Uh -huh. uh, pyramids, we have, my tribe came from an area that, where they were built by hand. They were built out of dirt. Okay. These large pyramid structures in the southeast United States that were here, you know, 500 to 1,000 years in the common, in the common era. So my tribe had a very successful, you know, or, you know 
they did quite well, and they've made decisions all the way through. To this day, my tribe has, um, we probably have a pretty large tribe, probably a fifth, I think about the fifth largest tribe in the United States, okay. of over 500 tribes in the United States. Okay. And we have probably 30, maybe 30,000, I'd be a guess, you know, uh-huh. uh, people in the tribe. I am a member, a citizen of the tribe through my great-grandmother. All right. Because the government enrolled Indians back at the turn of the 20th century, mm-hmm. They, they enrolled the Indians, find out who the Indians are, let's mm-hmm. give them some land, and let's take the rest of it. Okay. That's what they did, okay. you know. Uh-huh. So that's how my tribe bases their citizenship is on the fact that my great-grandmother, her name is listed on these rolls as a Chickasaw, Chickasaw uh, Indian. Okay. And that's, that's how my lineage on my mom's side of the family in my Chickasaw heritage. Cuéntame algo. Tú vienes de una nación muy importante que es Chickasaw. Eres un piloto nativo americano, por lo que es importante entender quién eres y toda esta organización que tienen en su propio gobierno y su comunidad, que es importante. Sí, mi nación está en Oklahoma por ahora, no inició allí. Mi nación empezó en algún lugar del oeste, en la parte sur, que es ahora los Estados Unidos, y nuestro primer contacto europeo fue, creo, en 1500. Llegaron en lo que ahora es Florida, caminaron por todo lo que es el suroeste de Estados Unidos y encontraron a mi tribu. Ya habían visto a varios, mi tribu pues los dejó estar ahí, nada más porque tenían miedo, que no querían enfrentarse con ellos porque perderían. Fue hasta que ellos decidieron que querían esclavos y mujeres, y mi tribu peleó y los eliminó. Eliminaron a los conquistadores. Ronaldo Soto murió, me parece que en Arkansas. Entonces mi tribu sobrevivió al exterminio y así que tiene historia haciendo las decisiones correctas. And what does it mean, Chicasó? Is it has a, you know, a description well, or something special? Well, in, in the early, the migration legends, there were two brothers. Okay. Uh, Chicasó, Chata. And there were two brothers that led, led their people away from a, a, mo- a much more larger warring tribe. And at one point in time, the tribe came to a... There, the, the story is they followed a sacred pole, that every morning they would go in the direction the pole was leaning. Okay. And it got to a point where they had crossed what was now the Mississippi River, and Mississippi, I think, was a Choctaw word. But what happened was two brothers, Chicksaw, Choctaw, uh-huh. had a disagreement. And okay. one decided to stay, and the other decided to go. So my, my side, of the, uh, the Chickasaw side, ended up m- going on farther east and came back. So the Chickasaws and Choctaw people have very similar language, almost identical Muskegon dialect. And there are, um, now we're two tribes in Oklahoma, you know, in the south, southern part of, of Oklahoma. ¿Qué significa Chickasaw? ¿Tiene alguna descripción especial? En las leyendas de la migración había dos hermanos, Chica. Yata, hermanos que venían de una tribu más grande y en algún punto la tribu en las historias, había un secreto que iba a la dirección del polo y el punto donde iban ahora era el río Mississippi porque lo que le pasó a los hermanos Chica y Yata es que tuvieron una discusión y uno decidió quedarse ahí y el otro siguió. Entonces el lado de Chica so decidió seguir al oeste, la gente Chica y la yata son muy similares. Tenemos un lenguaje similar, color de piel, y ahora hay dos tribus en el sur, en Oklahoma. But do you have like your uses and customs as a, as a nation? Yeah. As a, uh, tell me a little sure. bit about it. Okay. Well, you know, for us, it's, it's interesting to know about you. You know, we have so many nations here in Mexico sure. too, but, but from you, it's so... Talking about with John Harrington. What, what most people see when they see about American Indians, they see uh-huh. the war bonded, horse riding, uh-huh. Plains Indian. Uh-huh. Okay, and that is a reality for some tribes. That's not the reality for all tribes. And uh-huh. so, you know, my tribe is comes with what they call the five civilized tribes: Cherokee, Choctaw, Chick- uh, Chickasaw, and Seminole and Creek. These were tribes in the southeast that had a had a form of government uh-huh. the, as the way the government viewed them. And so we have a legislature. We have a, we have a, what's a, a governor. We have a lieutenant governor, mm-hmm. or which would be equivalent to say a chief in another tribe. We also have a supreme court. We have mm-hmm. we have uh, we elect legislators. We have our own. It's a, a sovereign government because our relationship with the United States mm-hmm. is one through treaty, okay. and they recognize our government. So uh, let's okay. let's step back a hundred years. Okay. okay, when my tribe was removed from the southeastern United States by President Andrew Jackson. Uh, and removed Indian Territory, which was now present-day Oklahoma. Okay. Um, you know, they're on what's called the Trail of Tears. And, but my, my tribe came over, and they still 
maintain this form of government that they had established. Uh-huh. So um, about late, late 1800s, um, well, take it back. There was a time capsule buried in Oklahoma back in 1913. Mm-hmm. And the woman that organized this time capsule happened to be uh, of Native American descent. She was from, I think, Chickasaw Creek or Cherokee Creek. Um, but she was a socialite in Oklahoma, and she gathered together all these Native artifacts along with other artifacts, uh-huh. put them in a time capsule. It was opened up, you know, in 20, you know, 100 years later. In that, there was a poster uh, of a celebration in Oklahoma that was Indians, a drawing of Indians dancing around a fire. Uh-huh. And the word said, Lo, the poor Indian, whose untutored mind sees God in the clouds and hears him in the wind. And below that, it said, Come watch the primitive people of the forest and their weird incantations. I'm like, mm. wow. Mm. Right next to that poster was a book. And that book was a bound copy of my tribe's constitution and laws. So here, here's this, that's the yin and yang of the cosmos, right? Mm-hmm. Here's, the, here's one poster saying this, the, the untutored Indian, the uneducated, unstructured savage, essentially. And here's a printed book that my tribe had printed of their laws and their constitution. So wow. you know, it's, just, it's, it's a perception some people have of, of who Native Americans are that you know we have we have a structure we have a government we have it we we do quite well actually Ustedes tienen costumbres ropa típica como nación háblame de esto sabes para nosotros es muy interesante saber de ti hay muchas naciones aquí en México muchos grupos indígenas pero queremos saber de ti John Harrington Para muchas personas les dices nativo americano y ven el exterminio la frustración esa es la realidad para algunas tribus pero para la mía la ven como muy la ven como muy civilizada. Esta tribu tiene su propio gobierno, tenemos una legislación, tenemos gobernador, un gobernador electo, un jefe de gobierno y también tenemos Suprema Corte, tenemos nuestro propio gobierno. En Estados Unidos nos reconocen a nuestro propio gobierno. Vamos desde hace 100 años como tribu, que bueno, como les digo, ha cambiado de ubicación, pero el señor Andrew Jackson nos quitó de nuestro territorio y eso fue lo que mantuvo esta forma de gobierno que se había establecido, así que después de los 1800 ya había una cápsula en el tiempo en Oklahoma. En 1930, la mujer que lo organizó resultó ser de ascendencia nativa americana, pero ella se las ingenia para tener artefactos norteamericanos junto a otros y de esta manera se abren los 100 años. Después viene toda una celebración con los indios bailando alrededor del fuego y la gente. Y dijeron, pobres indios, ven a Dios en un póster, en un libro, una copia de la constitución de mi tribu. Así que este es el Jing Yang del cosmos. Por un lado tenemos un póster que dice los pobres indígenas, salvajes incluso. Por el otro un libro que mi tribu hizo con sus leyes, y esta es una percepción que tiene la gente sobre lo que son los nativos americanos. Es muy confuso. Tenemos una estructura, tenemos un gobierno, estamos bastante bien hechos, pero no todos son vistos así. Right. And, and it's good to know about the real thing, about your village or your nation, because, yes, through movies and, you know, everything that we have the possibility to to know a little bit about na- nation uh, Nation Americans. Can I, can I uh, add to that? Yes. Is, is yes. that the fact that, you know, there's a stereotype of what people think Native Americans are. Native okay. Native and, and Native people want to say, you know, we're, we, we are very proud of our heritage, but this is who we are. We do this too. We're, in, we're doctors, we're engineers, we're scientists, we're astronauts. You know, and so you want to make sure that people understand that it's not what the stereotype is, that we're still here, we're still productive, we're doing, we're, we're here, you know, we, have, we haven't gone anywhere, you know, and, and that's what I think is very important. Es bueno saber la verdad de tu nación, los documentales y todo lo que tengamos para saber y conocer una verdadera realidad de los nativos americanos. Sabes, hay un estereotipo de lo que la gente piensa de los nativos americanos y nosotros lo que pensamos. Estamos muy orgullosos de donde venimos por lo que somos. También somos doctores, somos ingenieros, astronautas. Quiero asegurarme que la gente sepa que no somos lo que se dice este tipo de estereotipo. Estamos aquí y no nos vamos a ir. You, you haven't gone anywhere. You're an astronaut being a Native American from Chickasaw. 
how did you become an astronaut? Th that's the point. And, and I'm sorry, maybe you've been no, tell no, no, no. everybody about this story, but you know, Mexicans would like to know about you, John Carrington. Okay. Well, my, <laughs> this is funny. I moved around a lot as a kid. I'm from Oklahoma originally, mm -hmm. but I, my parents moved a lot. So I didn't stay in the same place. I did not grow up in my heritage. I did not grow up, you know, learning the Chickasaw language. I did not grow up, you know, asking my great grandmother a thousand questions, you know, because mm -hmm. she spoke the language fluently. We moved around a lot. I'm very proud of my heritage. I'm very proud of where I come from. But I had, I moved around a lot. And by the time I got out of high school, mm -hmm. I, my parents had said I had to go to college. And that's okay, you know, because my parents had not gone to college. My parents okay. had high school educations. My mom had a, um, you know, dropped out of high school when she was uh, like 15, 16 years old. Okay. Uh, but they knew the importance of education, so they encouraged us to go to college. They left it up to us mm -hmm. to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So. I go to college with the notion of being a forest ranger because I didn't like being outside in, the, in a house or in an office. I wanted to be outside. I wanted to work outside. <laughs> I had never spoken to a forest ranger. I had no idea what they did. So, but I, I think that I'll, I'll go do that. But the same year I started college, I learned how to rock climb because mm -hmm. I liked being outside. And so I spent all my time rock climbing, very little time studying, and I had a 1.72 grade point. I got kicked out of college. I got kicked out of college. So how did I, how did I become an astronaut? Um, the, the, the fact I was a rock climber, I got a job in the mountains working on a survey crew on a highway. Mm -hmm. And I saw guys using math in practice. I saw people using mathematics that I'd seen in a textbook, but now I saw the practical application of it. And I was getting paid to do it. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed it. I, wa I was outside and I was working hard and having fun. And the guy I worked for sat me down one day and said, what are you going to do when you grow up? Uh -huh. And I was, nine, I was 18 years old. I was grown up, right? No. Uh -huh. no. But no te vas a ir a ningún lado, eres un astronauta nativo americano de Chicasó. ¿Cómo le hiciste para ser astronauta? Cuéntanos. Bueno, de pequeño me movía mucho, soy originario de Oklahoma, pero mis padres se mudaban seguido, no crecí en Chicasó. Crecí preguntando mil cosas a mi abuela porque además ella hablaba un idioma de manera excelente y estoy muy orgulloso de eso. De donde vengo me movía mucho, pero cuando estaba en la prepa mis papás me dijeron que tenía que ir a la universidad. Por ello nos pidieron hacerlo y eso fue hasta la prepa. Mi mamá dejó la preparatoria cuando era muy joven, pero a mí me impulsaron a ir a la universidad, así que yo voy a la universidad y bueno, quería estudiar, no quería estar en casa ni en una oficina, quería estar afuera, trabajar afuera. En mi primer año de escuela, de universidad, pues empecé a escalar montañas, mis, mis calificaciones bajaron, me echaron de ahí y entonces como me hice astronauta, pues escalando las montañas conseguí un trabajo como guía por la carretera en las montañas y vi a unos chicos usando matemáticas y matemáticas, entonces había visto un libro y eran las matemáticas, eran las matemáticas aplicadas y me iban a pagar por hacerlo y por estudiar y por compartirlo, así que Empecé trabajando en el exterior muy duro y el chico con el que trabajaba, Sam, me preguntó qué vas a hacer cuando seas grande. Yo tenía 18 años y él le dije que no estoy ya grande. It's a good question yeah, at that moment question. in your life. But, but I, oh, he said, what do you do when you're 25? You, you can't do this. I said, I want to do this. He said, well, you can't, you can't do this on four bucks an hour. You can't make a living on four, four dollars an hour. That's what I was getting paid. And he said, go back to school, become, become the engineer, and be the one responsible for all of this. Be the one that's, you know, that designs the highway. And so I listened to him, and I went back to school. Um, by the time I, I graduated, I changed my major to mathematics because I liked math. Uh -huh. And I happened to be a tutor for a, um, a guy who flew airplanes in World War II. He, he needed a calculus tutor, and that was me. <laughs> and he was my Navy tutor, so he encouraged me to join the Navy. So I did. So I joined the Navy. Hmm. Joined the Navy in 1983, uh, went on to hunt, uh, I flew big airplanes, I lived in Alaska, lived in the Philippines, hunted Russian submarines, that was my job. But, but most of my friends that, that left the Navy went to work for the airlines. And when I was eight years old, I used to sit in a cardboard box and dream I was going to the moon. I wanted to be an astronaut. Oh. But I never thought I could do it. Until, as in the Navy, I said, if I go and become a test pilot, and uh -huh. if I get a master's degree, if I go down that path, I have a chance. I may not be one, but at least I'll have, I'll be qualified to apply. Okay. So I did. So I went to test pilot school. I went to get a master's degree and I, I applied a couple of times. And the second time I, they interviewed me and I got selected. Ah. 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 Sí, pero es una buena pregunta en ese momento de tu vida. J, cierto. ¿Qué quieres hacer cuando tengas 25? Y le dije que quería seguir siendo eso. Y él me dijo, no puedes sobrevivir 
con cuatro dólares a la hora. Eso me pagaban, me dijo, regresa a la escuela y conviértete en ingeniero. Sé responsable de los diseños en la carretera y así que regresé. Cuando me gradué, cambié mi título por uno de matemáticas porque me gustaba mucho. Fui tutor por un chico que veía aviones de la Segunda Guerra Mundial. Él revisaba los aviones de la Marina y me invitó a unirme a la Marina. Así lo hice. Estuve en la Marina en 1993. He vivido en Alaska, en Filipinas, en submarinos. Ese es mi trabajo, pero muchos de mis amigos que dejaron la Marina fue por miedo. Pero cuando yo tenía... Apenas unos años, siempre deseaba ser astronauta. Nunca pensé que lo haría. Era un sueño. Hasta que la marina les dije que iba como piloto de prueba, sacaban un grado de, saqué un grado de maestría y entonces tuve la oportunidad de caminar y avanzar por ese camino que no sería seguro, pero al menos tendría una posibilidad de aplicar. Y eso fue lo que yo hice. Fui a la escuela de pilotos, conseguí mi maestría, apliqué un par de veces y en la segunda vez me entrevistaron y fui seleccionado. But it's the only way to be an astronaut to, to go through all the study. Not the no, okay. no. Half half the folks in the office were civilian. Uh, they were PhDs, they had master's degrees, they were engineers, they were okay. scientists, they were doctors. The other half the military, you oh. know, so you don't have to be military to be an astronaut. You don't. Right. You don't have to be a pilot to be an astronaut. I was lucky. I was a pilot. I was an engineering test pilot. And, and so I, but I had the best job in the office. I got to fly the front seat of the jet. I was still a jet pilot. I got to do that. Uh -huh. But I got to walk in space. I got to do three, three spacewalks. Pero esa es la única forma de ser astronauta, el recorrer todo eso. No, no, no. La mitad de los chicos eran civiles con un grado de maestría como ingenieros, científicos, doctores. No eran militares. No tienes que ser militar para ser astronauta, no tienes que ser piloto. Yo tuve suerte de ser piloto. Pero tengo el mejor trabajo. Tengo, tengo la vista frontal del jet en la oficina. Aunque soy piloto de jet, puedo caminar en el espacio. He hecho caminatas espaciales también. So. I know about your workspace. Tell me about it, because, you know, the images that we've been seeing in, in, in To Nature's Wild, that footage, outer space, it's so, I, I don't know, it's so emotional. For me, what do you feel over there? What was the feeling, the, the feeling of isolation or nostalgic or watch all these I, I can imagine. I can't imagine, really. Well, I think what we, what we imagine is what we see on the TV, we see in the movies. You'll see Star Wars, see Star Trek, yes. you see all these things, you know. And, but the reality is it's, it, it is, is more dangerous. It is, you know, we don't, the, the idea is that you see a movie and it's, da and it's dangerous and people are getting blown up and things like that. Well, if, if we did that routinely in space, we wouldn't be flying in space, right? Mm -hmm. But the reality is it's very dangerous. But we do it, we're very safety conscious. We try very hard to do everything the proper way. And, when, and we understand the system, so if something goes wrong, we can resolve the issues. And so the neat things are working with a team. You're going up with a group of folks that you rely on, that you're, re, you're responsible for each other. Uh -huh. That's great. One guy's a commander, but uh -huh. the rest of us, you know, we all work together. That's yes. the way, the, the nature of it. And, it's, and you, you work so hard that sometimes to step back and, and realize how, how lucky you are, it, mm -hmm. it takes a moment. Because mm -hmm. you're so focused on doing your job, because you're, paid, you're being paid to do something. You're not being paid exactly. to be a tourist. Exactly. And so, you know, there's times you have to stop and go, wow, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm up here. I'm up. <laughs> look, look what I'm doing. I, oh, I got to, to go back to work. And, and, but the reality is when you get done, you go, oh, man, that was, that was quick. You know, I want to do it again. <laughs> I want to do it again. Yo sé, yo sé de tu caminata espacial. Cuéntame sobre eso, por qué las imágenes y qué hemos visto. In To Nature's Wild hay muchas imágenes muy emocionantes. ¿Qué sentiste? La sensación de estar solo, la nostalgia de ver todo esto. No me lo puedo imaginar, John. Una cosa son las imágenes de la tele o las películas. Todos ven películas, Star Wars, Star Trek. Pero en realidad es más peligroso que eso y más emocionante. Todo se ve en esta rutina de volar y disparar en el espacio. Si hiciéramos eso, no estaríamos en el espacio. Pero la realidad es que somos muy conscientes, nos, esforma, nos esforzamos mucho y es que cuando lo hacemos es como un ¡pum! muy rápido. Quiero hacerlo de nuevo. Pero has pasado so many horas ahí, ¿verdad? Right? Estaba durante dos semanas. Y volví después de dos semanas y luego la misión que estaba después de mí fue Colombia. And I lost, I lost seven friends on Columbia. Columbia broke up coming home. 
And so we didn't fly the shuttle for two and a half years, roughly. And then I was training for a space station mission. I was going to fly with two Russians. I was going to command two Russians to the space station for six months. Fabulous. Great. Love it. Well, I was diagnosed with osteoporosis uh, when I was training in Russia, and I was disqualified from flying on a long-duration mission. Because you, you lose bone mass when you fly in flight. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, and you have to do a lot of exercise to, to keep your bone mass up. And if I went up with a deficit, mm-hmm. you know, flying in space is great. You know, walking's a pretty good thing, too. I want to come back and, you know, this is where I'm, I spend most of my time, right? So, <laughs> but yeah. Pero pasan muchas horas ahí, ¿no? Son como dos semanas, regresé después de dos semanas, y luego la siguiente misión fue Colombia. Perdí a muchos amigos en Colombia en regresar a casa después. Íbamos a viajar y yo tenía mi cargo a dos rusos. Iba a llevar a la esta- los iba a llevar a la estación espacial por seis meses, que fue fabuloso y genial. Lo amo, pero me dio osteoporosis cuando estaba entrenando en Rusia y me descalificaron de la misión por volar. Y también tuve los reconocimientos, pero bueno... Estaba yo no al 100%, ya que tienes que hacer mucho ejercicio y mantener esta masa muscular en los pulmones para volar al espacio. Es una cosa muy compleja. Es genial. Volar en el espacio es genial. Caminar también. Y sí lo he hecho. And, and what about time? You know, I've no, I don't know why I'm thinking about time. The time that the, the, this essence of time here in Er, it, it, here in Earth and outside, you know, in, in you know, over there, well, s- in space. The, the neat thing is, is that there's a. We won't get into the physics of it, but the, the faster you cl- the faster you go, mm-hmm. the the as they say, we had two we had twins in our class. They had Mark and Scott Kelly, uh-huh. identical twins, uh-huh. and they did an experiment. They said, okay, we flew Scott in space for a year. Theoretically, uh-huh. Scott is not as old as his younger brother or his other brother yeah his, his twin uh-huh. because I'm, I'm he was twin okay. too. so uh-huh. he was going uh, he was going much faster and the idea is that if you approach the speed of light as einstein mm-hmm. you know, if you approach the speed of light time gets longer things get shorter you know so a 10 foot pole can become nine foot you know eight inches or how, how many ever meters and 10 meter pole can become a nine meter pole if you're going fast enough and so and and he's not younger he just didn't age as fast okay that's just theoretical that is You know, it, it's nothing in the great scheme of things, uh-huh, you know, uh-huh, as, uh-huh. as fast as we're going. The idea of flying in space is we, we lift off, we start our watch, okay? It's a 24-hour day. It's like, but you're going around the Earth 16 times every day. Every 24 hours, it takes 90 minutes to orbit the Earth. See 16 sunrises and sunsets. But you're still using your watch, you know? Okay, okay, it's, okay. okay it's mission elapsed time is 10 hours and 10 minutes. I have to do this because uh-huh. my checklist says I have to do that. <laughs> so you just use a watch. It's the oh. same, same. ¿Qué hay del tiempo? No sé por qué pienso en el tiempo en esta sensación y y, y cómo lo percibes en el espacio. En la física, mientras más rápido vayas, tenemos una clase con los hermanos gemelos, hicieron este experimento donde uno fue al espacio por un año. Teóricamente Scott no es tan joven como su gemelo porque estuvo en el espacio. Ah, yo tengo una gemela también. Pero mientras te acercas a la velocidad de la luz Einstein, mientras más te acercas a esa velocidad, el tiempo se hace más largo. Entonces, no es porque no sea más grande o más largo, simplemente no envejeció tan rápido. La idea es que vamos al espacio, ponemos nuestro reloj por día, das vueltas a la Tierra 16 veces al día por 24 horas. 16 puestas del sol, pero lo tienes medido. En 10 horas tengo que hacer esto porque mi lista dice que tengo que hacer esto y es lo que marca el reloj. And why you decide not to to have these uh, air force, you know, flights or space force flights. You you left it in 2007, I guess, or something like that. <coughs> it was a special reason or For your age, or I don't know. No, I retired when I was 48 years old. Can you imagine that? Uh-huh. But see, I, I had been I've been training for a space station mission, and I got disqualified from that medically. So I could have always flown the shuttle again, but we weren't flying the shuttle. Uh-huh. And I was offered an opportunity in 2005 to come to work for a commercial space company and be a test pilot for a new vehicle. Okay. Flying space twice a week instead of once every five years or however long. Okay. And and they paid me quite well to do it. You know, and so I made a really, really tough decision to leave the office when I was fully qualified to keep flying the shuttle. I could have done, you know, three more spacewalks. I could have flown space three more times. And I I honestly regret having left, okay? Mm. 
because our, my friends kept flying. Mm-hmm. And I, I flew once. I, I'm very lucky I got to fly when I did. Yes. And I, everything I could ever have done on a mission, I did. So okay. I'm happy with that. Okay. I would love to have done it again, but I made a decision. We all make decisions in life. Yes. And we all deal with the consequences of that. Uh-huh. But if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have hopped on a bicycle and rode across the country. I wouldn't have met a beautiful woman and gotten married. You know, I, I wouldn't have gone back and gotten a PhD. You know, so there's a lot of things that happened in my life that were good based on that decision. Yes, you know, and so you just do what sure. you do. Yeah. ¿Por qué decidiste no tener estos vuelos de la Fuerza Armada? Te fuiste en 2007, creo. ¿Fue por alguna razón especial por tu edad? Me retiré cuando tenía 48 años, pero imagina, estuve entrenando y por esta razón me descalificaron por razones médicas. Siempre. Fue complejo. Había un shuffle, me ofrecieron un trabajo en 2005 para volar para una empresa comercial, espacial, como piloto, pero un nuevo vehículo, volar dos veces a la semana por cinco años y me pagaban bastante bien para hacerlo. Fue una decisión muy difícil el dejar la oficina. Cuando estaba en perfectas condiciones para volar el shuffle, pude haber hecho tres caminatas especiales más, ir al espacio tres veces más y honestamente me arrepiento de haberme ido porque mis amigos siguieron volando. Fui muy afortunado de volar cuando pude. Todo lo que pude hacer en la misión lo hice, entonces soy una persona feliz y lo haría de nuevo. Pero tomé una decisión apurada, todos tenemos decisiones en la vida, vivimos con las consecuencias de las mismas, pero si no hubiera hecho eso, pues no habría recorrido el país en bicicleta, como lo hago hoy, no habría conocido a la hermosa mujer con la que me casé y no habría regresado y obtenido mi PhD. En fin, han pasado muchas cosas muy buenas basadas en esa decisión. And you just take some other opportunities in life. You know, yeah, it's yeah. it's fantastic that you live it and you just do it once, no? For so long you had to study a lot and prepare yourself and and be exposed of so many things, but life it's like that. Life goes on. I life mean, you can on. you can do something that's the high point of my professional career, no doubt. High point, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now what? And, and there's a level of depression that goes with, I, I'm not doing that anymore. Uh-huh. Okay? And you see your friends fly, and it's like, ah, darn it. But at the same time, you've got something else to do. So that's why I went back and, and earned a PhD. And then I, I get, I get a, my, my wife passed away about four years ago. Yes, and know. about a month after she passed away, I get a call from McGill of Ray Freeman Films to be in a movie. And I'm like, what? You know? And they said, hey, we're, we're doing this movie called uh, Into Nature's Wild. And would you be interested in, in being um, it's a star in it, co-star with a woman named Ariel Tweedo? And I went, I'd love to do that. And so it, it so from a moment of a really a time of a tremendous grief mm-hmm. to spending a couple of years traveling the country with a bunch of really neat people, meeting a bunch of really neat people, seeing a bunch of really neat places, <laughs> that wow. it was a it was a great way to you know to absorb you know you know when bad things come on you in life. Yeah. Hay muchas oportunidades en la vida. Es gracioso por lo que hayas dejado y lo que hay, no, perdón, hay muchas oportunidades en la vida, es gracioso que lo hayas dejado y que lo hayas hecho aunque sea una vez y has tenido que estudiar todo este tiempo, has estado expuesto a muchas cosas. J, la vida sigue, puedes hacer muchas cosas porque desde mi punto de vista profesional está todo bien, es que puedes hacer muchas cosas y no estoy dejando de hacer nada. Ves la vida de tus amigos y dices, quiero hacer algo así al mismo tiempo, pero encuentras otras opciones. Regresé y conseguí mi PGD, luego mi esposa falleció hace unos años, cuatro años, y un mes después de eso me ofrecieron estar en la película. Me dijeron, oye, vamos a hacer una película que se llama Into Nature's Wild, te interesa ser coestrella junto a Ariel Tweedo, y les dije que me encantaría hacer eso. Fue un momento de depresión total después de la muerte de mi esposa, y después de un par de años llega la oportunidad, me la he pasado viajando por el país, conociendo a muchísima gente, lugares, nes- lugares preciosos, de una gran manera de absorber la vida en los exteriores y saber que pues las cosas pasan y que la vida continúa. Yeah, that's fantastic. You have a fantastic story, John Harrington, really. I'm so proud and 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 thankful to talk to you, really. So so you decide to to live outside, live outdoors, feel the landscapes, understand the landscape, connect with earth, you know, in all these different uh, stages or, or landscapes yeah. so but you 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 used to do that before the opportunity oh, yeah. to be in, in into nature's wild yeah I, i grew up in the mountains i was born in oklahoma but i lived in colorado 
we would always go to the mountains. We would go up in Jeep trails. We'd hunt. We'd fish. We'd hunt for rocks, all kinds of stuff. Um, and I always loved it. But I ended up moving to Wyoming for uh-huh. a little bit. Rode my motorcycle way out in the middle. Oh, it was fabulous. Yeah, I'd be on the Wind River, going to the, the Wind River Mountains, Wind River Range. Just, it was gorgeous. Then I moved to Texas. I was there for about four years. Love the people. You know, I graduated and went back to Colorado, you know. <laughs> yes. And, and uh, went back to school. And then I, I always wanted to be outside. I, I love the challenge of rock climbing. I love the challenge of skiing. I love, I just love being outdoors. Uh-huh. So, you know, after I left, you know, I had a beautiful job in Houston. I loved my job in Houston. <laughs> what uh, kind of job you had? I was, was an astronaut. Uh-huh. You know, I had, uh-huh. I had a fabulous okay, job. Okay. Uh-huh. But then I decided, you know, Houston wasn't my favorite spot. No. You know, it was just a, I, I needed to go back to the mountains, and I did. Uh-huh. And, and so now I live on a small runway in the mountains of Montana. I'm, I'm the airport manager. I drive the snow plow. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I have a, um, a couple small airplanes I could fly. I have some great friends I ski with and, and rock climb with. And I'm in my 60s, and, you know, life is good. So I, wow. you know. Es fantástico, tienes una historia maravillosa, John. Estoy muy orgullosa y agradecida de poder hablar contigo de verdad. Entonces, decidiste vivir afuera en el exterior, sentir el mundo, conectar con la tierra, con estos escenarios, estas escapadas al exterior. Fantástico. Sí, crecí en las montañas, nací en Oklahoma, pero viví en Colorado. Siempre fui a la montaña, cazábamos peces, escalaba montañas. Todo siempre fue muy lindo, moverme en la naturaleza, tomar mi moto, estar en medio de la nada. Era padre estar en el río, en las montañas. Luego me mudé a Texas y lo hice durante algunos años. Regresé a la escuela, pero siempre quería estar yo en el exterior. Outdoors. Amo el desafío del esquí, escalar, simplemente Quiero estar afuera. Tuve un hermoso trabajo en Houston, también lo quise muchísimo, pero no era mi lugar favorito. Necesitaba regresar al exterior, a las montañas, así que eso hice. Ahora vivo en las montañas de Montana. Como gerente del aeropuerto puedo volar algunos pequeños aviones. Tengo amigos, como lo hago, en el esquí también. Estoy casi en mis 60 años y la vida es muy buena. You're in the middle of your 60s. Yeah, I'm 63. I'll be 64. Wow. You look fantastic. You're very, you're very kind. Like my pony, I got my, I have a ponytail, a ponytail you can't see. My hair's the longest it's been in uh, ever. I've never had my hair this long. So. Wow. Yeah. So, so the opportunity to be in Into Nature's Wild was perfect for you. At the right you, time. you lost your wife. You were in a moment maybe, you know. It's terrible. Uh huh, terrible. So, so it was the best opportunity for you to travel out and to know all these fantastic places maybe you didn't imagine yeah. because we don't imagine how nature is so amazing here in mexico really i just i was in, in at the desert the white desert which is the same in, in nuevo mexico mm-hmm. that no i went to to um, uh, I, i forgot the name sorry mm-hmm. but but You know, and and then you go to another place and to Zacatecas, and we have so many places, beautiful places in in in, in our countries. Right. We we have to say in Mexico, this richness, nature richness, sure. is is amazing. I'm sure you come down here and you could do a movie like we did Into Nature's Wild in the United States, and come down here and do the exact same thing down yes. here. There are places here that people don't know about that if they're shown the opportunity and the people that are there, they'll go. I've got to go see that. Uh-huh. I mean, the, you know, we have a beautiful, beautiful place. Every place I've been, I've had the, I've had the privilege of being many places in the world, mm-hmm. and every one of them is special. You know, and I've had the privilege of flying in space. I've had the privilege of living underwater for 10 days in the Florida Keys. Uh-huh. I had the privilege of riding a bicycle 4,300 miles across the United States, and every one of those has a spectacular portion to it. And the same thing here. You can step out. I can walk out of this hotel here in Mexico City and walk through a park. And kids playing in the park. And there you can hear, you can, I think there's a place that's got parrots over here. You know, and you can hear it. And people are having fun. And they're enjoying being out in trees. And it's in a huge city like Mexico City, I can look out the window and see a huge park. And so you take advantage of that. You know, it's right there. Ahí estás a mitad de tus 60 Así es, wow, luces fantásticos, tengo mi cabello largo, jamás tuve mi cabello tan largo. Estar presente en Into Nature's Wild fue perfecta para ti, pudiste superar la pérdida de tu esposa que fue muy triste y viene una buena oportunidad para salir, viajar, conocer todos estos lugares maravillosos que no imaginabas y que, bueno, la naturaleza es grandiosa. 
en México, por ejemplo, yo no me imaginaba y recientemente estuve en el desierto blanco de, Nue de Nuevo México y luego también estuve en Zacatecas. Tenemos unos paisajes y unos espacios fantásticos en nuestro México que tiene que ver con este contacto con la naturaleza y esta riqueza natural sorprendente. Creo que se puede hacer otra película como Into Nature's Wild de México. He conocido y he tenido el privilegio de ver algunos lugares, también el espacio, la bicicleta. Cada escenario es magnífico, al igual que aquí. Puedo salir caminando de mi hotel e irme caminando un parque, ver a los niños. Es que es maravilloso las pirámides, escuchar a la gente teniendo diversión, el sonido de los árboles, del aire, todo es tan grande como México y hay unos parques impresionantes. Por ejemplo, pensemos en Central Park en Nueva York. And the people now we live, you know, through our cell phones and our TV and our laptops and and and, and the message of Into Nature's Wild is just to go out and just leave this technology on a side and live outside and breathe and and calm anxiety and all these you know dark thoughts that we have maybe all the time or worries or you know thinking about money or job or family or all of us we have problems and we we are humans you know we're not perfect and that's the way it is but going out changed you a, so a lot in so many ways well i have a have a thousand things to do at home i've got <laughs> i've got a car I'm, i got a car i'm working on an airplane i'm working on i've got a i got a moma yard i've got a i'm building a sauna i have all these things i have to do but then I, i i take off and go two weeks into the mountains of, of alaska and ride on a river when i don't see anybody except my small group for a short time and then i come home for a day and i'm next thing i'm in a city of how many people in mexico city You know, largest, it's the largest city in North America, uh -huh. that's what I'm told, it's okay, it's a big city. And, and so I've gone from these different environments, and they're all special, you know, we get to meet and do really neat things, and, and you got to step back and appreciate every place you are. Mm -hmm. And when you get, you get too much in one spot, you say, I've got stuff, to, I'm going to go over there and relax, I'm going to go sit out, go sit out on the runway, or not, or, you know, sit out on my taxiway with my dog, and, uh -huh. and you know, just, you know, I might have a deer down at the end of the runway, or an elk, or a moose, or, you know, I got you know i see bear you know and go to glacier national park and you oh. know just go outside you yeah. can go outside and realize you're stepping off the food chain or stepping down the food chain uh -huh. you know because you're not the strongest thing in the you know in the park now that's fine <laughs> that's a, it's a neat thing la gente hoy vivimos a través de nuestros teléfonos de la tele de las laptops el mensaje de into nature's wild es solamente sal y deja la tecnología a un lado simplemente vive afuera respira y deja atrás estos pensamientos oscuros que tenemos todo el tiempo las preocupaciones o estar correteando el dinero el trabajo la familia nuestros problemas que tenemos que resolver sí no somos perfectos es la forma en la que somos pero hay que salir y hay que cambiar los aspectos de nuestros pensamientos en la naturaleza. Bueno, tengo cosas que hacer en casa. Tengo un avión en el que estoy trabajando, un carro en el que también estoy trabajando. Estoy construyendo un sauna, pero hay momentos en los que me voy a las montañas de Alaska. Y bueno, estoy con grupos, tiempos cortos, tiempos largos. Y la verdad es que es impresionante la Ciudad de México. Es la ciudad más larga en América del Norte, entonces... Estar aquí para mí es realmente descubrir diferentes ambientes y todo lo que sucede en cada lugar debes de apreciarlo. Cuando regresas a casa y te relajas, te sientas con mi perro, entonces ves todo lo que viviste y entiendes toda esta cadena alimenticia. John Harrington, why is it so important for kids go outside but also to know about science and space? One of the, yeah, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> I think there's a curiosity that comes with it. And a lot of what science is, it's asking questions and resolving. The scientific method is, you know, ask a question, try and, and find out the answer, okay? And you realize, you get an answer, and if all the data supports that answer, and, you know, multiply, then that's true. That's fact. That's the way it is, okay? Uh -huh, uh -huh. But you have to ask the question and be curious. And so as a kid growing up, you get curious. You go outside. You start looking at rocks. You start, you know, digging in the grass. You know, you get muddy. You, you scrape your knees. And you realize that, You have an opportunity now, you can go outside and do that, but you also have an opportunity to learn a lot of things on the little computers we have. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if I'd had the internet when I was a little kid, I'd probably be sitting there looking at it just like a lot of kids, you know, but it's, an, it's, an, it's a tool 
to answer questions you have and the idea of being curious and the idea of trying to solve problems because we have a lot of problems in this world, right? Mm. We have a lot of people that disregard that we can solve the problems. They, they don't see the science behind it. They don't appreciate the science behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, we, have, we, we are fundamentally changing, I'm getting political here, we are fundamentally changing life on this planet because of our, of our use of this planet. And people, some people, people in a position of power don't recognize that or, or don't believe it's true. And the reality is, and the science shows it is true. So the more kids we have that are curious, that go out there and get educations, that ask the questions and be able to ask the questions that haven't been asked yet and to solve problems we have, then this world would be a better place. And, and I was an astronaut. I got to fly in space. I'm so glad I did, right? It changed my life. But if I think, you know, I'm going to go to Mars and terraform Mars and make Mars an Earth-like planet, and I don't think I'm doing it down here, then, then we're, we're doing a disservice to everybody that lives here and everybody that ever, will ever live here because we should take care of our own planet before we think we can fix, somebody, fix another one. You know? <laughs> John Harrington, ¿por qué es muy importante para los niños el salir también y conocer la ciencia? Es una excelente pregunta. Creo que hay mucha curiosidad. Se trata de la ciencia. Hay que hacer preguntas, el método científico. Hay que intentar encontrar respuestas. Cuando encuentras una respuesta, una evidencia lo respalda. Es verdad, es un hecho, pero tienes que hacer la pregunta, ser curioso como niño. Salir, ver las rocas, el pasto, te ensucias, te raspas las rodillas, te das cuenta que puedes vivir y aprender. Eso no lo haces cuando estás dentro jugando con la computadora. Si hubiera tenido internet como los niños de hoy en día, posiblemente me hubiera quedado todo el día con lo, como los niños de hoy. Hay que ser curiosos y tener la idea de soltar todo y salir. Piensa que podemos solucionar todo, pero sí afuera, en el exterior. Estamos cambiando la vida útil del planeta por lo que hacemos. Algunas personas, la gente con poder, no cree que sea de verdad el cambio climático y todo lo que está ocurriendo. Entonces, mientras más niños curiosos seamos o tengamos con educación, que se hagan preguntas, entonces se van a poder solucionar muchos problemas en este mundo, que será un lugar mejor para todos. Yo fui astronauta, pude volar en el espacio, estoy muy orgulloso de haberlo hecho, pero creo que si voy a Marte y digo que voy a hacerlo... Un, a un mejor lugar, pienso hacerlo en la tierra. Quiero hacer todo lo mejor en la tierra. Estamos haciendo un desperdicio que no podemos tomar a un planeta destruido. Tenemos que arreglarlo y transformarlo. That's a, the, a very important point. The, the unconsciousness about we have water, we have, we have green areas, you know, the trash. The, the, the smog, the contamination, using the car, you know, plastic, I hate to use plastic, so many things that we are not conscious. Forget about going outdoors or those landscapes as Alaska or, you know, here just around the corner in our cities. And, and, and we, we have this compromise with nature. We have to give back a lot. We take a lot from it. But we, we take a lot from a lot from it, lot. you know, and and how do we how do we give back to it? You know, this idea of having green space and having trees and having places that, you know, trees are why we have oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and 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 they're around because we have carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. and so this process it's a it's a give and take process. If we don't have trees, then we're not going to have us, you know, mm -hmm. vice versa. So, you know, we've got to understand that what effect we have are we having on our environment? You know, how can we mitigate those things and still live a lifestyle that. You know, it's not harsh and not something that, you know, we have to make those tough decisions and find the, find the alternatives to what we're used to. Because mm -hmm. what we've been doing, it, it'll be a point, in, in, it's depleting at a point in time, uh -huh. you know, and it will. And until we recognize that and do something about it and, and recognize that that's true, then, you know, we're selling ourselves short. Yeah. So we need smart people. We need people that will ask quest hard questions and try and find the answers. Yeah. Scientists, engineers, those type of things. Este es un punto importante, la inconsciencia que tenemos del tiradero de agua, de las aguas verdes, la basura, la contaminación, el uso del coche, el plástico. Muchas cosas que no somos conscientes. Aquí en la esquina, en las ciudades, tenemos ese compromiso con la naturaleza. Tenemos que regresar. Es de, tenemos que regresarle. Es demasiado. Así es. 
tomamos demasiado de ella y cómo le regresamos. Esta idea de tener áreas verdes, árboles, son la razón por la que tenemos oxígeno y están aquí porque les damos dióxido de carbono. Ese es un proceso de dar y recibir y ese es un proceso que ambos necesitamos, entonces somos esenciales en el ambiente. Debemos encontrar una forma de vivir que sea sin lastimar y sin tomar esas decisiones difíciles y fuertes. Encontrar alternativas de lo que estamos acostumbrados. Debemos reconocer que el cambio climático es real y hasta que no hagamos eso nos queda muy poco tiempo. Necesitamos gente inteligente que se haga preguntas y trate de encontrar las respuestas. So you have a special experience through your the, the filmmaking of uh, Into Nature's Wild, something that just, you know, change some in you, John Harrington. Well, what they captured, I think, in the movie, they did a fabulous job. In the opening of the, of the movie, um, there's a recreation of me on the end of the space station. Mm -hmm. I remember that, I remember that moment perfectly okay and they captured it perfectly it's not it's it's not the real it's not a picture it's a it's a recreation of the the moment for me and i remember looking over the edge of the space station out of the vastness of the universe thinking whatever else is out there and it, it fundamentally changed my perspective on my place on this planet fundamentally uh -huh. and a lot of folks call it the overview effect is that now you have an appreciation you recognize the you know this is a, this is a small planet you know we're a tiny thing in a vast universe we're we're microscopic in a vast universe mm -hmm. but you know we need to take care of it and so a lot of the astronauts that i know of they've come back that have this very strong sense of personal responsibility for making a difference and, and in this movie this idea is hey his, this is nature this is what we have let's take advantage of it let's uh, that's a wrong word not take advantage let's appreciate the fact we have a place to go uh -huh. experience it and take care of it That's what, that's what we need to do. Taking advantage is the wrong word. Let's go out and, and enjoy what we have and let's keep what we have because generations that follow us, we want them to have this, if not better. You know, that's what we all want for our kids, right? Yes. Entonces tienes una experiencia especial a través de Into Nature's Wild, algo que haya cambiado dentro de ti. En cuanto a capturar momentos, creo que la película hizo un trabajo fabuloso al inicio que hay una recreación de mí en una estación espacial. Recuerdo ese momento a la perfección, lo captaron excelente. Es una recreación de un momento maravilloso de mi perspectiva del lugar en este mundo y te das cuenta que eres una cosa pequeña en este universo, microscópica incluso, que debemos cuidarlo. Muchos, astronautos que, muchos astronautas que conozco regresan con este compromiso personal de hacer la diferencia en la película. También te dicen que esto es la naturaleza. Esto es lo que tenemos, vamos a aprovecharlo, no esa palabra, vamos a aprovecharlo, vamos a apreciar lo que tenemos, vamos a apreciar lo que tenemos. Esa es la palabra, aprovechemos, es una mala palabra, vamos a valorar y a salir y a conservar lo que tenemos. Sure. Oh, I love to talk to you. Yeah, thank you, John Harrington. John B. Harrington. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Tomorrow I will see you, yep. and, and I hope you continue enjoying Mexico City. Sorry for our smog, yeah, our nice pollution. <laughs> you had nice rain last night. It was great. Yeah, but that's nature. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thank you so Thank much. You. Where you can so we follow you? You do you have a social media you want to share? Maybe you have a channel, YouTube channel, or where? Oh, you wanna, before yeah. before you right. go and tell me about your book, please. Okay, Which I have a, a my my late wife was an author. She wrote a book called A uh, um, Little Bit of Wisdom: Conversations with the Nez Perce Elder. The Nez Perce Elder she wrote the book about was the guy I knew, and that's how we got we connected. Long story, but. Uh, she decided, John, you need, to, you need to write a book. You need to write your book. And she was going to help me write my book. And we said, let's do a kid's book. Let's, you, need a, you got some great stories. So we did a kid's book. It's called Mission to Space. And my tribe, the Chickasaw Nation, published it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's in its third or fourth printing. So this is good. Oh, <coughs> good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. And uh, it was great. It's pictures of me growing up, you know, me with my little rockets and, and then training as an astronaut and, and, you know, and being in spacewalks and stuff. And, but also it has a, the Chickasaw language at the back for the vocabulary. So you can see what the English word is. And like, say, uh, I would be, what is a spacewalker? You know, what's, a, what's an astronaut do? Well, he walks above. So Abanoa would it would be. So I'd be Chikasha Abanoa was what would my name would be, but I'm an above walker. So Abanoa. 
Uh, and they have they have that in the back of the book. And that's fun. And and, and that's not you don't do it for money. You do it for the fun of it. Oh, you know? yes. Yeah. And, and, and we want to know about your language and your, the words that you use in your Chickasaw Nation. So hopefully, you know, one of these days, I'll, I'll write a book. And the thing is, that every time I, I think about writing the book, something else happens in my life. Oh. You know, and there's something else to add to it. There's all these different things. Flying in space is a very small portion of my life. Uh-huh. It's a big portion of my life, but but it was a very small point in time. Yes. Okay? changed my life but there's all these other things that I've done and things I've done along the way that have shaped who I am and and what story that I think I'd like to tell I don't want it to end up on a space book shelf yes okay it's not it's more than a space book Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't want the space enthusiast I want the kid that doesn't that's just not sure what he's going to do or she's going to do when they grow up that you can make decisions good ones bad ones you know you can fail at stuff and get back up I want that kid to go well if that guy can do it then I can do it you know, that should be the way it is. You don't have to be the smartest kid in class. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be the one that is top of class, best at anything you've ever done. Okay. Mm-hmm. I worked with astronauts who were, you know, incredibly smart people. But a lot of us, you know, kind of came along in a, in a strange way. Yes. You know, because we work hard. We're dedicated to what we do. Uh, we work well with others. You know, we're, we, uh, you know, we're not, um, you're going to go camping with somebody for two weeks. You know, you, are you going to get along with them? You know, and, mm-hmm. but the, create, the, the part of having, you know, an education, makes you qualified for it exactly. but it doesn't make you you know being a plus you know four four 4.0 student doesn't make you smarter than the person that's got a 3.0 or a mm-hmm. 2.5 they they may have more common sense than you ever will mm-hmm. and a lot of times mm-hmm. common sense will keep you alive so oh. yeah and you have a beautiful voice oh thank you <laughs> thank you john carrington i'm so happy to talk to you okay. thanks thank you. thanks so much you have social media Oh, social media. I've, you know, John B. Harrington. There's a ca- Commander John B. Harrington Facebook page, my, my professional page. I don't do much right. to it. Then I have a personal page. You can find me on Facebook. You'll, you'll see my okay. smiley face. And then I have a Instagram, I think, is uh, N4060, at N40628. And say, what's N40628? That's the call numbers on my airplane. All right. And you'll see a really beautiful painting of me that a person had done of me in my spacesuit. Orange, bright orange, yellow. So you'll see All right. it. So, Thank yeah. you. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Me encanta hablar contigo. Muchas gracias, John Harrington. Nos vemos el día de mañana. Que sigas disfrutando de la Ciudad de México, nuestro smog, nuestra contaminación y tráfico. Lo vi ayer, estuvo grandioso. Pero así es la naturaleza. Muchas gracias. ¿Dónde podemos seguirte? ¿Tienes redes sociales? ¿Quieres compartir con nosotros? ¿Dónde podemos seguirte? ¿Tienes redes sociales? ¿Quieres compartir algo? ¿Un canal de YouTube? Cuéntame, un, cuéntame de tu libro también. Mi esposa era escritora, escribió un libro y ese libro es sobre alguien que yo conocí que fue como conectarnos en esta larga historia de vida, pero ella me dijo que tenía que escribir un libro así que fue como decidí hacerlo. Es un libro para niños, se llama El Espacio y mi Tribu y va bastante bien para los tiempos que hoy vivimos. Mi entrenamiento como astronauta, las caminatas espaciales, pero también tiene un glosario en la parte de atrás para que puedas saber qué es, una, un, qué es un caminante espacial. Eso viene atrás del libro y lo haces muy bien y entiendes muy bien. Si queremos saber de las palabras que usas en tu nación, bueno, vienen en mi libro y cada que escriba algo estaba en mi vida, así que todo lo he ido añadiendo. Hay cosas que no están en el libro, que el hecho es para qué. Pues bueno, me gustaría contarlas. Es un libro del espacio y quiero que vaya un niño al espacio. John, tienes una gran voz, muchísimas gracias, estoy feliz de hablar contigo y tienes redes sociales, sí, John Harrington, el comandante John Harrington es mi página profesional de Facebook, no tengo página personal, pero sí una cara sonriente que me pueden escuchar en, me pueden ver en YouTube y también en Instagram como Force. 016 way, o sea, arroba 4016 way. Les mando un abrazo y muchas gracias.